China, once the poster child for rapid economic growth, now finds itself at a pivotal juncture. The nation's post-pandemic economic trajectory, marked by challenges in the real estate sector, has become a focal point in global economic discussion. As China grapples with repercussions of an over-reliant real estate market, it's eyeing a new direction, a shift towards industry. Today we're going to dive into China's economic landscape and the struggles facing their local governments, and most importantly, why they're facing them, and the nation's new uh, industrial investment strategy. So during China's transformative years of the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, China underwent a significant economic liberalization. Um, this period witnessed a surge in China's GDP's exports, domestic investments. However, as the data suggests, the nation's over-dependence on real estate became this ticking time bomb. The real estate sector accounted for nearly 30% of China's total output, or GDP. And in major cities, property prices soared, reaching values between 18 to 50 times the annual income of residents, outpacing even global hotspots like San Francisco and New York. And to sustain the growth rate of 6 to 7%, China had to invest a staggering 43% of its GDP, a figure considerably higher than counterparts like Japan and Korea during uh, kind of similar industrial phases. So who faced the consequences of this decision? The Chinese local governments, of course. The real estate downturn didn't impact developers and investors. Local governments found themselves in the eye of this financial storm. And here is why. In the absence of a property tax system, local governments heavily banked on land sales for revenue. And with real estate sectors declining, this once reliable source began to wane. To offset this dwindling revenue, from land sales, local governments turn to borrowing. However, the uncertainty surrounding the revival of the real estate boom made lenders kind of apprehensive. Thus, sales quickly dried up, and so China's central government felt the need to act. And in response to the crisis, the central government intervened, advocating for state-controlled banks to lend to local governments at preferential rates, really. Now, this evergreening strategy, reminiscent of Japan's post-1989-91 bust approach, might offer temporary relief, but risks sidelining the private sector, potentially extending the economic downturn. They essentially kept trying to kick the problem later down the road, hoping it would solve itself. And frankly, it hasn't. In the face of these challenges, China is charting a new course recognizing the pitfalls of an over-reliant real estate sector. The nation is now emphasizing investment in industry. Recent data, in fact, showcases a significant burst of lending to the industrial sector, signaling China's in tend to replace the faltering real estate sector, which at its peak accounted for almost 30% of total GDP. Now, this move towards industry is not just about economic diversification. It's a strategy play to bolster manufacturing and potentially position China as a global industrial powerhouse. However, the success of this pivot hinges on the type of manufacturing China promotes. The real test will be whether this manufacturing aligns with global demand or if it sets China on a path of overproduction and potential uh, wastages. Now, China's current economic narrative serves as a testament to the complexities of managing growth in a rapidly changing global landscape. The nation's over-dependence on real estate has presented significant challenges, especially for local governments. However, China's new industrial investment strategy offers a glimmer of hope. As China transitions from real estate-centric model to an industrial one, the world watches this very close. And the decisions made now will only shape China's future economic trajectory, but will also have profound implications on the global economy. So the road ahead is very uncertain, but we will be doing our best to keep you informed. So make sure to like, guys, subscribe, and uh, throw your comments in the comments section below. Stay safe out there. Thanks.